Dear guests, welcome to the conference on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the work of ICTY. In the opening part, first I will give the floor to the President of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, Judge Theodore Mera. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome you today here in Sarajevo as we mark together the 20th anniversary of the establishment of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and consider the legacy that the ICTY has created and continues to create today. I am also very happy that we are marking the 20th anniversary of the ICTY with such a distinguished audience. In this respect, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Bakir Izebegovic, the representative of the presidents of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and to His Excellency Jurian Krak, ambassador of the Netherlands to Bosnia and Herzegovina, both of whom will be speaking to you momentarily. I would like also to extend my thanks to His Excellency Andre Schaller, the ambassador of Switzerland to Bosnia and Herzegovina, for joining us at this conference, and to the many other eminent representatives of states and the European Union and the OSCE who are with us today. Your presence is, in many ways, emblematic of the support and cooperation of countries who have extended to the tribunal this cooperation in general and in relation to this conference in particular. And on behalf of the tribunal, I wish to thank you for your sustained commitment to and interest in our work. I would also like to particularly thank the donors whose generous support made this conference possible. In particular, the European Union, the governments of Switzerland, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, the Republic of Korea, the European Union, and the Open Society Justice Initiative. We are also very fortunate to welcome to this conference a great many leaders and officials from the UN system, the OSCE, and other international organizations, from the civil society, and from the academia, from the judiciaries. And I'm particularly happy to hear, see here this morning President Kresa, and ministries of justice of the states of the former Yugoslavia, and from the local communities here in Bosnia and Herzegovina and throughout the region. Although there are far too many of you to recognize by name, I hope that each of you knows how very appreciative I am, and we all are, that you have taken time to be with us and to contribute to the very productive and important dialogue that began yesterday and will continue today concerning the tribunal's work and legacy. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the hard work of many colleagues here and at The Hague in preparing for this conference. I am particularly grateful to Magdalena Spalinska, to Helena Eggleston, and the other members of the ICTY's outreach and communication section at The Hague, and to our chairman this morning, Almir Alic, to Ms. Ernesta Ademagic and their colleagues in Sarajevo and in Belgrade. I also wish, of course, to send, thank Mr. Howard Tucker and the members of the tribunal security and administration teams who have been so tremendously helpful before our arrival and over the past few days. You have each been instrumental in making this conference a success and for this, I thank you. All that has been achieved over the past 20 years 
since the ICTY was established would not have been possible without those who believed in the ideals of international criminal justice and worked diligently and with dedication to make it a reality. As the ICTY marks 20 years since its establishment, it is also moving to complete the remaining trials and appeals and to transition to remaining the remaining functions to the new mechanism for international criminal tribunals. It is thus a very fitting time for us to pause and to reflect on the le legacy the tribunal will leave behind. And I'm so very grateful to all of you for joining us to do just that. Thank you very much. Pozivam ambasadora Nizozemske u Bosni i Hercegovini. Ambasador of Netherlands in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mr. Jurijan Krak. Judge Maron, representative of the presidency, Mr. Isabekovic, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'm also delighted to see in the audience uh, Madame Kreshro, judge at the state court, and also the state prosecutor's office is represented here today. They're key players in safeguarding the legacy of the ICTY in Bosnia. First of all, let me tell you that the government of the Netherlands is pleased to be co-sponsor of this conference together with our Swiss friends. And as you all know, my country has a special relationship with the International Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. The ICTY, the first major international criminal tri tribunal since Nuremberg and Tokyo, has found a seat and a home in The Hague and has become an integral part of the makeup of that city. And apart from being a milestone in the development of international criminal law, the ICTY has played an important role in The Hague becoming the international legal capital of the world. And thanks to ICTY's pioneering efforts, the world has changed from a place where it was virtually impossible to, to bring perpetrators of the most atrocious crimes to justice into a place where such criminals are increasingly faced with criminal proceedings and will have to answer to judges appointed by nearly all states on this planet. My presence here today is a sign of sustained political support of my government to this independent tribunal of the UN and to its extensive legal, political and moral legacy even if no judgment in the all-important and highly emblematic cases of Mr. Ratko Mladic and Mr. Radovan Karadzic has been pronounced yet, I would like to point out that the legacy of the ICTY is already significant. As I said, the ICTY has contributed substantially to the development of international criminal law. The ICTY has given thousands of victims a voice. The tribunal will leave behind an authoritative and comprehensive account of what happened, of where it happened, and of whom did what to whom during the wars in the former Yugoslavia. It has paved the way for the establishment of subsequent international criminal tribunals. And last but not least, the ICTY has also helped to strengthen national capacities in the fight against impunity. And referring to this last aspect of the ICTY legacy, my participation in this meeting this morning indicates that my authorities attach great importance to the political and principled responsibility of all governments in this region to give priority to cracking down, bringing in and prosecuting persons suspected of war crimes before their own courts of law. Last July, the ICTY has made a transition into the residual mechanism. This means that this responsibility now more than ever rests upon the shoulders of national authorities. And in addition, my authorities are convinced that a firm regional political support for the fight against impunity is indispensable. And that's why the Netherlands welcomes the increased and improved regional cooperation in the fields of mutual legal assistance extradition and information exchange. It is one of the few encouraging and positive elements I found in the latest EU Commission 
progress report on Bosnia, but it is an important one. And a special word of thanks is due to the Bosnian and Herzegovina government for its support of a joint initiative of Belgium, Slovenia, Argentina, and the Netherlands to draft a treaty promoting international intergovernmental cooperation in arresting and prosecuting those suspected of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. And this highly appreciated support from Bosnia proved that this government is convinced of the benefits of international legal cooperation and takes its obligation to prevent impunity in these cases seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, the legacy of the ICTY needs to live on. And for that reason, continued and principled political support of ICTY, even if one does not agree with all of its verdicts, is an obligation of every state who wants to be a full member of the community of nations. Downplaying the importance of this tribunal for political purposes is as undesirable as it is irresponsible. After all, full cooperation with the tribunal remains an essential requirement for the stabilization and association process in the Western Balkans and is a condition for membership of that community of values, the European Union. And once again, the largest burden to do justice to the legacy of the ICTY in Bosnia-Herzegovina rests now on the shoulders of the authorities of this country. And the role of the state court is key in this respect. And I would like to recall that through the state court, Bosnia-Herzegovina was the first country in the Balkans able to try its own war criminals in its own specialized court and on its own territory. Current attempts to undermine and weaken the state court are reasons for great concern to my government because completing the process of rendering justice for crimes committed during the wars in the former Yugoslavia is vital for lasting reconciliation. But ladies and gentlemen, let there be no doubt about our position. We are not indifferent to the sensitivities that the complexities of this region's recent history have caused. Coming to grips with them, we know it's painful, we know it is difficult, and we know it will take a lot of courage of all parties and institutions involved. But we also know that it is inevitable. Needless to say, my government, and for that matter, everybody who cares about Bosnia, my country, were upset to learn that 10 war criminals were released from prison in Bosnia last week, pending a new trial. These are people who have been convicted of very serious war crimes, including genocide in Srebrenica. Their release is very difficult to explain to the public at large in my country and incredibly distressing for the survivors in Bosnia. They have our deepest sympathy. My boss, Minister Timmermans of Foreign Affairs, has strongly urged Bosnia to take appropriate action. But my government trusts that all measures will be taken to prevent any more convicted war criminals being released unnecessarily and to ensure that they serve their sentences. This, ladies and gentlemen, is essential to Bosnia's credibility. The Netherlands will remain committed to ICTY and to its legacy. We will continue to support its contribution to peace and stability in the region, to reconciliation, and support the tribunal in its fight against impunity. The tribunal's outreach program, encompassing multiple transitional justice mechanisms, will continue to play a pivotal part. Transitional justice aims to build a bridge between the past and the future by dealing with past human rights abuses while trying to assure that such abuses never happen again. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, we will continue to focus our efforts on maximizing ICTY's legacy, both through the commitment to its completion strategy and with regard to the establishment of the residual mechanism. In short, we will remain committed to ICTY and continue to support its contribution to lasting peace and stability in this part of our beloved continent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. And I would like to invite the member of the Presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mr. Bakir Izetbegovic. Your Excellencies, dear organizers, participants of the conference, dear ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a warm welcome to Bosnia and Herzegovina 
and thank you for inviting me to attend this conference. This conference was organized on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the ICTY with the goal to open the discussion on the role and significance as well as the results of the tribunal since its establishment until today. Evaluating the results of the ICTY, its contribution, legacy and the message it leaves to the victims and criminals, to the countries and nations, international policy, law and justice, contemporaries, our children, present time and future, my feelings are divided. Before I explain this in a bit more detail, let me emphasize several important facts. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country that without any doubt has suffered the most after the breakup of the former Yugoslavia. Um, brutal aggression was committed Bosnia, against Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as the genocide that was committed against its citizens. Recently, I went to Tomasica near Prijedo, the biggest mass grave after the World War II in Europe, where until now over 400 bodies of killed men, women, and children were found. It is estimated that close to 1,000 bodies will be found. I would like to appeal to all those who have conscience to visit such places, places like Tomasz. It's unfortunately place, places like Tomasz uh, are something that Bosnia and Herzegovina is abundant with. Mr. Meron visited Tomasica, and by his human gesture, he paid tribute to innocent victims. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot help but think that there are two ICTYs. The first one established based on the resolution 827 of the UN from 1993, affirmed by the prosecutors and judges who had enthusiasm and full awareness of doing something special, something of enormous historical value. That is the tribunal that used to send encouraging messages to the world that crimes have to be punished, that this is one of the achievements of the evolution of the civilization. The first tribunal is something that I keep in high regard. In its work, we recognized our hopes, the hopes of these people, the families of the victims. In this world, there is justice, after all. That same Hague Tribunal brought some historical verdicts for Bosnia and Herzegovina, placing its stamp on the truth on the siege of Sarajevo and the genocide that took place in Srebrenica. Also, the ICTY gave huge contribution to the development of international criminal justice and established the principles of the human rights, internationally speaking. Also, rape or sexual violence during an armed conflict through Hague verdicts for the first time was recognized as crime against humanity. Unfortunately, in the time after that period, ICTY strayed from its original ideals. In the silence, behind the curtains, new ICTY was developed. The court that, according to modern analysts and numerous intellectuals, under the pressure of the strong ones, of the power ones, got tired, and its only goal became to finish its job. This new ICTY is looking through different eyes at the crimes that were committed in Bosnia and Herzegovina. How else to understand the releases of the leaders of the military, intelligence, and police from the war times for the crimes they have committed. They are concerning, to say the least. It is impossible for legal experts, and not even to go into the feelings of the victims, why those criminals who were initially indicted, for, um, whose initial verdicts were over 20 years, for them to be released. It is tasteless to talk about the knowledge and the verdicts of the same courts because some of them mean verdicts that are 20 plus years and some of them release those same people. How much sense does that make? Command responsibility became almost impossible to prove. Planners, those who made the decisions, became untouchables, protected for criminal persecution. Victims are wondering what kind of world is this that we're living in? Is justice accessible to regular people or is it a privilege of the mighty ones? How valuable is a life of a regular person in the Balkans? Those who issued the orders, those who planned, 
taking away the lives of thousands of people, dozens of thousands of people, are going to all together spend several decades in comfortable prisons throughout Europe. What message is being sent to the victims by doing this? And what, what message is being sent to the planners of the future wars? ICTY has not completed its job yet. There are several capital processes that are still ongoing. On one occasion, um, the first president of Bosnia and Herzegovina said, even the war criminals and all the other criminals have their right, and they have their right is the right to a fair judgment. One more thing that I will repeat at this occasion is that we believe in justice, even though the justice seemed to be very slow. So despite of everything, citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina still believe that ICTY will complete its job by following its initial idea, universal justice and humanity. We believe that justice will be available and that ICTY will keep its historical role in this regard. Interest of the victims has to be back in focus and their only interest is justice. It's not only the interest of the victims, it's the interest of everyone who wish to live in a better and safer world. Thank you.